Hello, ladies and gentlemen. For this course, you're going to need to be able to run a Linux distribution on your computer. And there's lots of different ways to do that. You could dual boot your system, so it boots into your current operating system. But if you reboot, you have the option of switching to Linux. Also, you can run a virtual machine, so you can have that running within Mac OS or within another Linux distribution, and of course, within Windows. Um, however, if you are running Windows, then this video is for you because there's a third option that I think works really well uh, where you can run Linux inside of Windows um, and get a lot of good performance and a lot of convenience that a traditional virtual machine uh, doesn't offer you. And so that's what this video is about just for those Windows users. And we're going to be using WSL or the Windows subsystem for Linux. Here I've got a fresh installation of Windows 11. This will also work with Windows 10. We're gonna to go to the command prompt, go to the start menu. I'm just gonna search CMD, a quick way to get to the command prompt, right click on it. We're gonna to need to be able to run this as administrator. I'm gonna click run as administrator and wait for the prompt. We can actually install this with just one command. We can just write WSL dash dash install. That will just do it. Um, however, one thing we have is uh, more options, more flexibility. So let's just look at what the options are. So if we type WSL still, but we do dash dash list um, and dash dash online, this will list the available distributions available to download. So we click on that and you can see here's the current one as the time of recording. And the star here is for Ubuntu. So if we just did install, it'll install Ubuntu. Ubuntu is great for this class, so we can just go ahead and do that. But you can also run multiple uh, distributions, um, and we can pick like a specific version of Ubuntu. Also, um, we can run Debian, so if you're interested, Debian's a good second choice. Um, and Kali Linux, you know, if you're doing some stuff with uh, the cybersecurity team, uh, then that would be a great option as well. And uh, I imagine there's going to be more distributions available in the future. Um, so those are all your options. Um, we can just do WSL dash dash install, and um, that will install uh, Ubuntu or if we want to pick a different option, or if that doesn't work, if you're running an older version of Windows 10, then that, that command might need another parameter. We can type dash D and then specify the distribution we want to run. Here, I'm going to just run Ubuntu. So I'm kind of over specifying here, um, but this will work uh, for sure to install Ubuntu. I'm going to hit enter, and then I'm going to let it run through its uh, paces. And this will take uh, probably just a few minutes, and then we'll have to restart our computer. Now it says uh, that the changes will not be effect until we reboot. Um, and so that's what we'll do now. We'll go ahead and reboot our computer and we should have uh, Linux being able to run within Windows and also parallel to it. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rebooting now. Okay, I've logged in to my system after restarting and uh, this popped right up. It's finishing the installation. It says it'll take a few minutes. We'll just let this finish. Okay, I went ahead off camera and adjusted the font size to make it a little bigger so that's easier for you watching this video recording. Um, but you can see now that Ubuntu has launched for the very first time, it's asking for a new username and it will ask for a password. We got to create a new account because we have a new operating system here within Windows. And so this account here is for us in uh, just for Linux. So I'm going to enter in as hey is for me, you can enter in whatever username is best for you and uh, a good password. Retype the password and we're in. So uh, we're ready to go with a fresh distribution of Linux, and uh, we're here at our command prompt. Very exciting. So uh, the first thing it recommends doing is running sudo apt update so we can see if there's any updated packages. So we'll do sudo apt update. Anything we type with sudo is going to require a password because we're going to do it with admin privileges. And I'm typing here, by the way, my password. It doesn't show anything uh, for security reasons, um, no stars or anything, but um, I did type in that password and hit enter. And um, so it's going to run and check the updated packages. This doesn't actually update the packages, but it gets a new list of the packages that are available. So we'll go ahead and let that run. And it's already done. So now we can uh, do sudo apt upgrade to upgrade to the latest version of these uh, packages that are already installed. Um, so we'll get here and you can see there's a list, 277 packages that need to be installed and updated based on this. Um, fresh install already needs to be updated. So we're gonna type Y here to confirm that we, yes, we do wanna install these and hit enter. And we'll go ahead and let this run. And this might take um, as long as it took to install um, Ubuntu or, or maybe just a hair longer, depending on how many packages you have to update. So we'll go ahead and let that run. Okay, so now that we're all up to date, 
Um, it suggested, I don't know if you saw it flying by, that we reboot. We don't need to reboot all of Windows, but we do need to reboot the virtual machine. And there's a little catch to that. So if you're familiar with Linux um, command line, you might think, oh, I'll just type uh, sudo reboot. Um, but that doesn't work under Windows subsystem for Linux. You can see it's not uh, not set up in a way where you can do that. And you might think, well, I'll just exit out like this. Um, but in fact, uh, it may still run for quite a while in the background in case you want to open it up again, it's ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up uh, the command prompt again, just the regular Windows command prompt, CMD. I'm going to right click on it so I can run it as administrator again and uh, hit yes to the prompt. Here, uh, I'm going to type WSL again, dash dash list. I didn't put dash dash online, so this will just list what we have installed. Um, and uh, so you can see we do in fact have Ubuntu installed. If I add the dash V command now, you can see more information verbose mode and you can see uh, it stopped. Uh, it must have stopped pretty quickly, but oftentimes it'll still be running. And uh, you can see we're running version two of the WSL. That's great. Uh, version one is more like a true virtual machine uh, where the calls get translated from Linux to a Windows API and then to the hardware level. And with version two, it's running in parallel. So it's literally uh, virtualizing right to a hypervisor parallel next to Windows. So it doesn't have to go through that Windows call stack, which makes it very efficient. So it's great that we're using version two uh, in this example. Anyways, all that to say, um, if you find that WSL is still running and you need to reboot it, you can do WSL um, dash dash shutdown and this will shut down all the virtual machines. So if you have multiple virtual machines installed uh, and running, this will shut down all of them. If you're interested in doing something that's a, a little less uh, specific uh, or more specific, then you can uh, look at the documentation, but um, this will in fact shut them all down. So it's a good idea to just double check that um, as you're going. And then we can open up Ubuntu at any point uh, from the start menu. In fact, if we click start, um, it may already be pinned uh, to your start menu. If it's not here, um, you can search for it. Um, so you can just type Ubuntu and um, see it shop, show up here. Uh, and then you can pin it to the start menu. You can also uh, pin it to the taskbar, um, which I'd like to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that as well. Um, so that way it always shows up down here. And then um, I'll click on that and uh, have it open up again. And we're back in the command line. Um, so now that we have a working system, I wanna just show you a few helpful hints. Uh, so I wanna show you how to access Windows files from within Linux and also access Linux files from within Windows. Uh, that way you can easily uh, share files between the two and, and interact with those. Um, I wanna show you how to use Visual Studio Code, which is set up really nicely to work with WSL, uh, where you can run um, Visual Studio Code uh, basically in Linux, but the UI, the GUI is running in Windows. Uh, so that's really nice. And then how to run any app, any graphical user interface uh, app from Linux and have it show up in Windows. Um, so those are the, the next few things I just wanna talk through uh, relatively quickly. Um, so first of all, let's talk about uh, Visual Studio Code. So I've already got Visual Studio Code in installed on Windows. So I didn't install it in Ubuntu at all, uh, but I can type uh, v VS Code here and you can see it's already installed. If you haven't installed it in Windows yet, you can go to uh, code.visualstudio.com and uh, click download for Windows there and have it downloaded. Um, but it's already installed in uh, Windows. It's not installed in Ubuntu. And I wanna point that out because um, I can actually just type code here and the name of the file I wanna open. And since I'm typing this from the Ubuntu command line, um, so if I do like test.txt, um, it will actually open the file in Ubuntu. But uh, here we go, this is a test and um, I'm gonna hit Control S. You can also go to File Save, but Control S is the shortcut for saving. And you can see, look, it's saved in Ubuntu Home. S Hayes, that's my home folder. It'll be different on your computer. Um, but if I if I go back to Ubuntu, it's still still running here um, in the command line. I'm gonna exit out, and you can see I've got access to the command line again now. And so I can run um, ls. I can type ls. This shows me the files that are here in my folder, and sure enough, there's test.txt. So that's actually in Linux. Um, it's not in Windows. It's in our virtual hard drive running in our, our, our Linux uh, operating system. And so that, that's very cool. Now let's say you want to uh, run or look at something that you've already written, it's already in Windows. Uh, well, you can easily access all your Windows um, files from Linux uh, by doing CD, remember that's change directory, just like, um, just like in Windows. Um, and we can do slash MMT, MNT, and that's mount, uh, and that's where um, all of our other hard drives will be mounted, or drives in general. So if I type ls here, you can see um, I've got WSL, that's our main um, you know, root file system for Linux, but here's a C, 
Uh, and that's actually the C drive in Windows. And if you also had a flash drive plugged in, um, it might show up as D, whatever the drive letters that are in Windows will show up here as well. So if I do now change directory, just C, or you know, if I want to do it from anywhere, I could do MNT slash C, right? Uh, then I can get everything that's inside my Windows folder. And if I just hit tab here so I can see what the options are. So these are all the um, options, all the folders in my Windows operating system currently installed. And um, if you want to access your home folder, that would be under users, right? And then the name, your username. And so if I hit tab here, you can see on my system, these are the usernames. Um, S Hayes is, is where, where I'm at for, for Windows. Um, so I can change directory to S Hayes. And uh, maybe also uh, documents. Maybe I want to go into the documents folder uh, to, to look at something. So now I've done that. I hit enter and you can see here I am uh, in this path. And if I type ls, these are all the things that are in my um, Windows path here in the documents folder. In fact, if I open up um, the file explorer, right, um, and uh, I can go to documents. And uh, here, so you can see there's a source code folder. There's a script file that's here right now. Um, if I go back to Ubuntu, um, you can see that's what it's seeing. Uh, source file here um, and uh, some this desktop.ini is hidden, but here's a script file um, as well. And there's links to, to my videos and my pictures, et cetera. I can actually um, open up the script file or I can go into the source code folder. Um, so if I change directory into source code, um, notice that it put a slash there uh, for the space. Another way to write it is with uh, single quotes. So we can type it like this. Uh, if there's a space, we have to have those uh, single quotes or account for that space somehow. Otherwise, it thinks it's two separate commands. Um, and I could type ls here. And here I've got a hello.cpp in Windows, but I can open it um, from Linux. And so here I could do uh, code hello.cpp and access this file. So you can see it's a really basic uh, hello world application in C++. Uh, so, so pretty easy to do. Now, let's say you don't want to type this command, but you're often going to a Windows folder. Like you really want to be able to get to the source folder pretty easily. Uh, well, we can create a link to it. A link is like a shortcut, uh, but a little bit uh, more uh, flexible. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do CD tilde. That gets us back to our home folder in Linux. Um, so this is uh, really slash home slash S Hayes in Linux slash user slash S Hayes. And the, again, S Hayes is my home. It'll be a little bit different than yours, but you can do CD tilde to get to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a link to access this file. So I'm gonna do LN, that's the link command, dash S for a soft link. And what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna name the link. So maybe we'll call this, I'm gonna do it without spaces so I don't need a single quote. I'm just gonna call it code in Windows. And that's the name of my link. So that'll be the folder I'm basically creating. And it's actually going to link or point to um, a folder in Windows, um, which really is this right here, the mount um, slash source code and so forth. Um, so I, I guess I do need single quotes here. Um, and then um, this whole path here, which I'm just going to select uh, so I don't have to retype it. Now, if I type ls here, um, you'll see... Uh, Actually, I don't see it. You know what? I got the arguments backwards. So uh, what I should have done is uh, ln, and then the first command is the place you want to connect with. So that's the, the destination we want to have the link to. And then the, the name we're going to give to this sh uh, shortcut to this link. Uh, so code in Windows would be the second of this set of parameters. So now if I type ls, yes, you can see code in Windows here. And um, that shows up. And if I do cd uh, to change directory into code in Windows, um, it says CD slash code in Windows, but if I type LS here, this is actually the stuff that's uh, in that folder um, in Windows. So hello CP CPB. Remember that's my inside source code here. Um, that's where uh, hello.cpp is. And this file here, this is the one I accidentally created. Um, so I can just delete it here um, and uh, and not worry about it. I just press delete. Uh, that's uh, from that bad command I typed where the parameters were backwards. Um, so now if I type ls again, you can see it just has the hello.cpp. So here's a nice like shortcut uh, to, to get to uh, this path faster to build edit files uh, in Windows. For example, if I had a class that I want to use um, this for, um, of course, you know, like uh, data structures, you could uh, link to it uh, pretty easily there or a GitHub repository, for example. That's one way to do it. Uh, that's able to access Windows files from Linux. Let's look at how to access a file that's on Linux um, from Windows. So I'm going to go back, change directory to home here. Remember, I've got um, this test file. What I'm going to go ahead and do is show you how to look at that test file, um, test.txt from Windows. Uh, so I'm going to open up uh, the uh, file explorer here again, and I'm going to go to uh, Linux here. Notice there's a Linux 
option right under the quick link on the left hand side. So if I click on that, you can see Ubuntu. Now, if Linux doesn't show up for you, another way to get to it is to in the um, top here in the bar, you can type slash slash WSL dollar sign. So if you type that, it will also go to uh, your list of WSL clients. And so uh, right now we just have Ubuntu, but if you installed multiple WSL Linux distributions, you'd see multiple ones here. So we can click on Ubuntu here, or we can click on it here and go to here. Um, and these are all the Linux files. And so again, um, I mentioned that our home folder is um, under, under home. Uh, so let's see here, here's home. And uh, here's my username, it might be different for you. Um, and here's all of my files, including test.txt. In Linux, everything that starts with a dot is hidden by default. So these are our hidden files for setting it up. And, and this is our link to our code in Windows that we created. Um, so, but you can see now I can open up this with just a notepad or whatever. You know, I could also open up with Visual Studio Code if I wanted to write it, edit it in Windows, but we have access to all these files. If you want to email it to somebody or um, submit it for an assignment, there you go. You've got it right there. And again, we can also create a shortcut. Uh, let's say, you know, in documents, I want to be able to access um, a folder here uh, more directly. So we can do that as well. Uh, so let's make a folder. I'm going to do mkdir, make a folder here. Um, and I'm just going to call this source code. And I'm not gonna put a space in the name, that way I don't have to use single quotes. Um, and here I'm gonna change directory to source code. Um, and I'm just gonna touch this file, uh, touch a file called um, uh, Linux test. This basically just creates a new file um, in, in the command line, a new empty file. So now if I type ls here, you can see there's a Linux text.txt file there for us to look at. And if I go back here, um, you can see, uh, if I refresh, uh, you can see now there's a source code a folder and inside here there's a Linux Linux text.txt file uh, that's just empty. It's zero kilobytes. Um, so uh, we have that. So let's um, let's open up the Windows command line because we want to create a Windows shortcut. Um, and again, I'm, I've got the command line already open and I'm already an administrator. You'll need to be an administrator for this as well. Again, if you already closed out of that, you can uh, search uh, CMD and then right click and say, oh, run as administrator and it'll pop up with this again. I'm going to go to where I want to create this link. So for me, that's uh, C slash user slash s hayes remember you won't have an s hayes folder it'll be your username slash documents and then what i'm going to do is create a, a link and in windows the command is mk link and we'll do slash d that means directory in windows you need to do a, a difference between directories uh, folders and uh, individual files that you're linking to and this one is the way i originally thought the other one was uh, so here uh, what we'll do is we'll name the link and then put the source the path we're pointing to so it's the opposite of the other command which is why i got confused earlier um, so here uh, we can call the link maybe we'll call it source in linux we want to point to that path. And so I'm going to just look at the folder here. Um, we want to point to this path here, basically, right? And so I'm going to click here and I'm just going to copy this, control C, copy it, right click here to paste it. And you can see that's the path that starts with slash slash. We'll go ahead and hit enter. And you can see symbolic link created. Now, if we look inside of our documents folder, so I'm going to go back to Windows. I'm going to click on Documents here. Now we've got, uh, looks like a shortcut. It says Source to Linux. But if I click on that, it actually is the source code inside of um, our Linux distribution. We can open this up. It's empty right now, like we haven't edited it. Um, but I can actually I can actually make changes to it. Um, so make and edit in Windows. And uh, save it. I hit Control S. Uh, and then in Linux, so I'll open up Ubuntu here. Um, one command to just view a file really quickly is cat. So uh, we'll type Linux test. Um, and uh, you can see right here, it outputs uh, make and edit in Windows. Um, that's the that's the output from the file uh, showing up right there. Uh, so anyways, um, all that to say is you can easily edit files uh, in Linux uh, or in Windows that are either in Linux or Windows. We've got the flexibility all of that. So I hope that's helpful to you uh, and some helpful shortcuts to uh, connect to those. Now let's talk about running graphical commands. Uh, so oftentimes you won't want to do everything from the command line and Visual Studio Code is really nice that you can just uh, run it uh, from the command line and make changes. But uh, it's good to be able to also launch any graphical program. And if you have an updated version of Windows 10 or 11, uh, you can run any, you can install and run any graphical program that Linux has in Windows and run it side by side with Windows stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna exit out of Ubuntu for now, uh, because what we wanna do is make sure that we're most up to date. So again, I'm in the administrator command prompt here. Uh, maybe I'll just clear it. Um, you could open up the command prompt if you already exit out of it, but you need to be an admin. And uh, what we'll do here is we'll type WSL 
dash dash update. This is important. We want to make sure we have the most up-to-date version and uh, it will have updates. Um, at least my computer did. I already typed this command once off screen, uh, but it did install some updates for me. Uh, so make sure you do that. Um, but right now it's saying uh, that, that we're all up to date or it can't update it any further. Um, so we should, we're good to go there. So once you have that and you're all up to date, when you run Ubuntu, you can actually run any um, uh, graphical options. Uh, so what I'm going to do uh, as a simple test, uh, and you might want to do this as well, just to see that you can run graphical programs, is install um, studio app install the X11 apps. Uh, this is just a simple like test set of basic graphical apps um, that can show up. I'm typing in my password here, hitting enter, um, and we'll just let this install. It's a nice lightweight way to just make sure that we're able to open graphical uh, uh, programs. And you can install any other programs you want, but here's uh, one, and one of them is X clock. So this will open up a clock. Sorry, with a C, X clock. Nice, right? So it's a little small on my screen here um, and I can make it bigger. Uh, let's go ahead and make it a little, a little bigger this way. This is the, the current time. Uh, and so you can see this is a window that moves around. It moves around um, separately from all my other applications. Uh, so here I can have the file explorer here. I can have the clock on top. So it's, it's really well embedded uh, into Windows. We've got, we've got all that flexibility. Um, another common one in the X apps is the calculator. So I can run X calc. And uh, here's a really uh, simple graphical calculator where we can do some uh, math if we wanted to. Um, you probably won't use this. You could just use the Windows calculator um, or something um, else. But um, you can see um, our graph ability to run graphical apps is is good. And that's really important uh, for us as we're going to be moving through forward in this course. Now, one thing that uh, we will want to install if you're in data structures, um, and you can install if you're using this in another course as well, um, but is GNU plot. We'll use GNU plot to show performance graphs and see how our code is doing, how, how fast it's running and how we can optimize it. Pseudo apt install um, GNU plot. And this will install a bunch of practice packages. I'm going to do dash Y here. Uh, this will just prevent me from having to hit yes later or type Y later. I'll just say, I, I, I do want to install everything here, um, but you can do it in two steps as well. You can see there's a bunch of packages that it's going to download and install. And uh, so this will take uh, just a couple of minutes as well. We'll let this run and I'll speed it up in post. Okay. So that's installed. We can actually run GNU plot um, right from the command line here. And this will give us a prompt of its own. Uh, you can see now it says GNU plot here down at the bottom. What we can do is type in commands of things we want to plot. Now, normally we'll pull in some data and see how it performs over uh, different variables. Um, but since we don't have any data, I'm just going to plot a sine wave. I'm going to plot the sine of X with a line. And you don't have to really know what this means right now. We'll explain it more in detail later. But you can see uh, that it is plotting and popped up with here a sine wave and uh, I can make it a little bigger so we can see the legend on uh, the output. And we can also in this add stuff to the plot. Um, so for instance, I can do uh, set set title. Um, we can name it something. Maybe I'll just call it sine wave and uh, hit enter. And it won't actually update the plot yet. You can see uh, it hasn't made the title show up. It'll show up here at the top. But uh, we anytime we want to, we can say replot. And then here, uh, now it says sine wave at the top here. Um, so we've added that title to our plot. And so we'll be using this again in data structures. That's handy. And uh, whenever we're done with GNU plot, we can type exit here to exit out and get back to our regular command line. Uh, so that's another tool. Again, you could install any application. You can install GIMP and do image editing. Um, you can install video players. Um, it's really flexible on what you can install. You can even install a whole graphical Windows system like KDE or GNOME or some of the more lighter ones. Um, and so there's a lot of flexibility there. One last thing uh, really quickly is you can see this is a fine command line, um, but uh, in Windows 11, there's the terminal that we can also use. Um, so I'm gonna exit out of this here. Um, and I'm gonna exit out of this here. If we go to the start menu, and this is also available in Windows 10. In Windows 10, you just have to install it. Uh, in Windows 11, it's built in uh, the terminal. Uh, and I'm just gonna search uh, terminal, hit enter. This is our Windows terminal. And uh, by default, it runs PowerShell, but we have a nice tabbed interface here. We can change the font size and whatnot, but we can hit down arrow here. And now you can see Ubuntu is one of the options as well as our, our, our regular Windows command line. Uh, so I can type Ubuntu here and bam, I'm in Ubuntu. Uh, and so this is kind of nice. We might want to have multiple uh, Ubuntu instances open. So here now I've got two of them and maybe one of them um, I'll change directory into um, that code in Windows and uh, 
open up Visual Studio Code, hello.cpp. So I've got that running. And um, then also I'm gonna go over here, change directories to um, the same code in Windows. And then here, um, you know, I've got access to the command line where I can compile it with G++ or something, do other edits. So um, here I'm actually running in Visual Studio Code and here I'm, I'm working with the files um, from the command line. So we've got that flexibility. We can exit out of, I don't need the PowerShell right now. Also, if you click this drop down here, uh, not only can you open these, but you can change the settings. You could change what's default. So maybe we always want the Ubuntu to run it by default. We can click here and change it to Ubuntu. That seems nice for me. So I'll go ahead and do that um, as well. And uh, you can see on the left here, there's different settings we can take advantage of, um, different interactions. I think we can also change when we click on Ubuntu to have it always open in the terminal. Um, but there's, there's a way to do that. Um, I just don't remember it offhand, but you can set that up. So you click on the Ubuntu logo and it'll open in the windows terminal as well. And there's lots of configuration there. So I highly recommend using the windows terminal. Again, it's a small thing, uh, but it can make a big difference if you're using, um, your Linux distribution a lot in windows, uh, to, to be able to take advantage of it this way. Okay. That's the video. Um, and obviously we'll delve more into it, but hopefully this gets you set up well for this class. Let me know as always, if you have any questions.